Then I took a smidge and applied it down there. This one's wife, giving Harry the elbow. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Yes, Harry has been given the Spanish archer, El Bow. The attendant at the polo last Friday in Miami has provided so much material from a relatively short interaction that is so useful in demonstrating to you the way that this one's wife behaves, all seen through the prism of her narcissism. We've already analysed the video that shows this one's wife ensuring that she elbowed her way into the midst of the photo opportunity, being the only spouse that turned up on stage to present an award, even though she doesn't play polo, she's nothing to do with the charity, and of course it's all manufactured for the purposes of the cameras to give her something to do, because whilst it's not her charity and she doesn't play polo, you've got to remember that this one's wife is the singularly most important person at that event, and therefore that's why she has to be front and centre, and she has to go on the stage and undertake the presentation. Thus we were able to analyse the necessity of her narcissism driving her to hog the limelight once again. Furthermore, we also saw the way that she was rude and bossy to the lady involved with Centre Barley, with the charity, who wanted to stand next to Prince Harry, which is understandable. He's the draw. This one's wife isn't. And yet, threatened by that, this one's wife behaved in a rude and haughty and arrogant manner, dictating to this lady, who was involved with the charity, telling her, essentially, don't stand next to my husband, go and stand over there. But there's even more that's come out of it, and this provides you with interesting insight with regard to the dynamic that takes place between this one's wife and the victim, the intimate partner, primary source victim, Harry, who is in devaluation. Now, ordinarily, a middle-mid-range narcissist such as this one's wife operates with a facade. That means that in public, she will still need to control Harry, but she's more likely to do so through benign means to keep up the pretense to the world at large that theirs is an idyllic marriage, that she's a wonderful person, that she adores him, but it's simply an act driven by her narcissism to disguise the fact that she is treating him to a sustained devaluation. She, of course, interacts with other people, non-intimate secondary sources, all being pleasant and chatting away to them as part of that facade. But as we've seen, her facade management isn't as good as it ought to be because, one, it failed to mask her commandeering the centre of attention, and two, it failed to mask her bossiness and rudeness when she was directing the lady from Centre Barley Charity to go and stand elsewhere other than next to Harry. But we're going to see now a further example of a slight crack in her facade. It's an almost blink-and-you'll-miss-it moment, but it is so instructive as to the ways of the narcissist. Here comes the footage. There you are. Now, when you might have seen this piece of footage first time around, you might not have seen the nudging that she does with her elbow. Here, the video has been accentuated to emphasise that, so that you can see very clearly 
that while she's interacting with people on the stage and Harry stood next to her, she gives him a couple of gentle nudges with her elbow to make him move away from her. This demonstrates this isn't an idyllic marriage because anybody with emotional empathy would not treat their partner in that way. Notice how this contrasts with the earlier behaviour where it's all arms around him, facade management, look at us, we're an idyllic couple together, we're so in love. Also, the territorial behaviour when the lady from Centre Barle turned up, no, you're not standing near him, get lost. And you'll notice that during that, this one's wife continued to cling on to Harry. But once that lady, a threat to control, moved on elsewhere, this one's wife, of course, wanted to focus on planting a kiss on one of the other polo players and wanted Harry out of the way. She, of course, can't turn round to him and say, fuck off, go and stand over there, because somebody would hear that and that would damage the facade. Her facade management isn't going to let that through. However, what it does cause her to do in order to control Harry is just issue this subtle nudging with her elbow to direct him to move away. Thus, it's a direct physical assertion of control by this one's wife over Harry. It is devaluing behaviour because it's simply saying to him, move away now, I don't want to deal with you. I want to focus on this hunky polo player who I'm going to give a kiss to. You must do what I state. And remember, because he's in the sustained devaluation, she will treat him this way. Do not lose sight of the fact that she subconsciously sees Harry as an object. He's like a television set that needs to be moved a few inches to one side for the perfect viewing. And of course... Your television set, if you want to move it, gets moved. It doesn't say to you, Oh, don't move me, I want to stay here. It's an inanimate object. It gets moved. And that's how Harry is viewed, as an inanimate object that is there to be utilised for her purposes. It shows the arrogance of this woman, her complete disregard for her husband, that she treats him in such a manner, that she nudges him a couple of times with the elbow, Piss off, get over there. And, what's worse, Harry obeys her. This is a man who is supposed to be brought up with some rigour, with what we would call a bit of bottom about him. But no. Here he is in full simp mode, with his dictatorial, domineering, bossy wife, nudging him with an elbow, causing him to move to one side. Thus, her direct assertion of control works completely. He complies. It enables her to assert control over him. He looks like the simp that he is, and it frees up space for her to then interact with the next appliance, the non-intimate secondary source that is the polo player, nudging Harry out of the way, out of the picture, so that she can focus on this individual. This is what she truly thinks about Harry, that he's an object that's there to be moved around at her order, that he is simply an appliance that is to be utilised by her as she sees fit. And whilst it's subtle, it's very clear, the behaviour, once you see it, you're not going to miss it again. She utilises that elbow to control him. Imagine how you would feel if your partner at a public event was nudging you with an elbow, it might be one thing to say, oh, could you just move to one side so I could have a picture with this person, please, darling? That's polite and asking, but not with this one's wife. Oh, no. The instinctive response of her narcissism is, I need to be seen with this polo player. Harry, you're in the way. Get out of the way. I'm going to elbow you. And, of course, this is just a continuation of the behaviours that we've seen before. The shoving in front of him, the interrupting his handshake, the walking in front of him, the talking to the group of men and relegating him to the sidelines. I'm important, you're not. And once again, there is an example of her narcissism where she directly controls Harry by elbowing him out of the way, showing the absolute lack of emotional empathy that she has for him. 
Anybody that suggests that this is an idyllic marriage does not know what they're talking about. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.